This lecture is about the text-based prediction. In this lecture, we are going to uh, start talking about uh, mining a different kind of knowledge, as you have, uh, you can see here on this slide. Namely, we are going to use text data to infer values of some other variables in the real world that may not be directly related to the text or only remotely related to the text data. So this is very different from content analysis or topic mining, where we directly characterize the content of text. It's also different from opinion mining or sentiment analysis, which uh, still have to do with uh, characterizing mostly the content, uh, only mm, that we focus more on the subjective content, which reflects uh, what we know about the opinion holder. But this only provides limited view of uh, what we can predict. In uh, this lecture and the following lectures, we're going to uh, talk more about uh, how we can um, predict uh, more uh, information about the world. How can we get sophisticated patterns of uh, text uh, together with other kinds of data? It would be useful to first take a look at the, the big picture of prediction. Uh, in data mining in general, and I call this data mining loop. So the picture that you're seeing right now uh, is that there are uh, multiple sensors, including human sensors, to report what we have seen in the real world in the form of data. And of course, the data are in the form of non-text data and text data. And our goal is to see if we can predict some values of important real world variables that matter to us. For example, uh, someone's uh, health condition, or uh, the weather, or etc. Right? So these variables would be important because we might want to act on that. Or we might want to make decisions based on that. So how can we get uh, from the data to these predicted values? Well, in general, we'll first have to do data mining and analysis of the data. Because we, uh, in general, should treat all the data that we collected uh, uh, in such a prediction problem setup, we are very much interested in uh, joint mining of non-text and text data. We should mine all the data together. And then through the analysis, we generally can generate the multiple predictors of this interesting variable to us. And we call these features. And these features can then be put into a predictive model to actually predict the the value of any interesting uh, variable. So this then uh, allows us to change the world. And so this um, basically is uh, the general process for making a prediction based on data, including text data. Now, it's important to emphasize that a human actually plays a very important role in this process, uh, especially because of the involvement of text data. And so human first would be involved in the mining of the data. It will control uh, the generation of these features. And it will also help us uh, understanding the text data because text data are created uh, to be consumed by humans. Humans are the best in uh, consuming or interpreting text data. But when there are, of course, a lot of text data, then um, machines have to help. And that's why we need to do text data mining. Sometimes uh, machines can see patterns in a lot of data that humans may not see. But in general, human would play an important role in analyzing text data in all applications. Next, human also must be involved in predictive model building and uh, adjusting or testing. Right? So uh, in particular, uh, we will have a lot of domain knowledge about the problem of prediction that we can build into this predictive model. And then next, of course, when we uh, have predicted values for the, the variables, then humans would uh, be involved in taking actions to change the world or make decisions based on these predicted values. And finally, it's interesting that a human could be also involved in uh, controlling the sensors. And this is so that we can adjust the sensors to collect the most useful data for prediction. So that's why I call this data mining loop, because as we perturb the sensors to collect the new data and more useful data, then we will obtain more data for prediction. And these data generally would help us improve the prediction accuracy. 
and in this loop humans will recognize what additional data need to be collected and machines would of course help humans uh, identify what data should be collected next in general you know we want to collect data that are most useful for learning and this there is actually a sub area in machine learning called active learning that has to do with this how do you identify data uh, points that would be most helpful for machine learning programs if you can label them right? so in general you can see there's a loop here from data acquisition to uh, data analysis or data mining to prediction of values and to take actions to change the world and then observe what happens and then you can then uh, decide uh, what additional data have to be collected by adjusting the census or from the prediction errors you can also know what additional data we need to acquire in order to improve the accuracy of prediction and this big picture is actually very general and it's uh, reflecting a lot of important applications of uh, big data so it's useful to keep that in mind while we are looking at some text mining techniques so from text mining perspective and we're interested in text-based prediction of course sometimes text alone can make predictions and this is most useful for prediction about the human behavior or human uh, preferences or opinions but in general text data will be put together with non-text data so the interesting questions here would be first how can we design uh, effective predictors and how do we generate uh, such effective predictors from text in, this question has been addressed to some extent in some previous lectures where we talked about uh, what kind of features we can design um, for text data and it has also uh, been addressed to some extent by talking about the other knowledge that we can mine from text so for example topic mining can be very useful to generate patterns or topic based indicators or predictors that can be further fed into a predictive model so topics can be intermediate uh, representation of text that would allow us to design high level features or predictors that are used for for prediction of some other variable it may be although it's generated from original text data it provides a much better representation of the problem and it serves as more effective predictors and similarly sentiment analysis can lead to such predictors as well so those other data mining or text mining algorithms can be used to generate the predictors the other question is how can we jointly mine text and non-text data together now this is a question that we have not addressed yet so in this lecture and then the following lectures we're going to uh, address this problem because this is where we can generate the much more enriched features for uh, prediction and allows us to uh, review a lot of interesting knowledge about the world these patterns that are generated from text and non-text data uh, themselves can sometimes already be useful for prediction but when they are put, uh, put together with many other uh, predictors they can really help uh, improving the accuracy of prediction basically you can see text-based prediction can actually serve as a unified framework to uh, combine many text mining and, and analysis techniques including topic mining and content any content mining techniques or sentiment analysis the goal here is mainly to infer values of real world variables but in order to achieve the goal we can do some other uh, preparations and these are subtasks so one subtask could be mine uh, mine the content of text data like topic mining and the other could be to mine knowledge about the observer so sentiment analysis or opinion analysis and both can help provide predictors for the prediction problem and of course we can also add non-text data directly to the predictive model but then non-text data also helps provide a context for text analysis and that further improves the topic of mining and the opinion analysis and such improvement often leads to more effective predictors for our problems it would enlarge the space of patterns of uh, opinions or topics that we can mine from text as we will discuss more later so the joint analysis of text and non-text data can be actually understood from two perspectives 
In one perspective, we can see non-text data can help text mining because non-text data can provide a context for mining text data, provide a way to partition text data in different ways. And this uh, leads to a number of techniques for contextual text mining. And that's to mine text in the context defined by non-text data. And you can see this reference here for a large body of work uh, in this direction. And we're going to highlight some of them in the next lectures. Now, uh, the other perspective is text data can help non-text data mining as well. And this is because text data can help interpret patterns discovered from non-text data. Let's say we discover some frequent patterns from non-text data. Now we can use uh, the text data that are associated with instances where the pattern occurs, as well as, as text data that are associated with instances where the pattern doesn't occur. And this gives us two sets of text data. And then we can see what's the difference. And this difference in text data is interpretable because text content is easy to digest. And that difference might suggest uh, uh, some meaning for this pattern that we found from non-text data. So it helps interpret such patterns. And this technique is called uh, pattern annotation. And uh, you can see this reference list here for more detail. So here are the references that I just mentioned. The first is the reference for pattern annotation. The second is uh, Chao Zhu Mei's dissertation on contextual text mining. It contains a large body of work on contextual text mining techniques. Mm -hmm.